Hi, my name is Jason Edelman, founder and CTO of Network to Code. Welcome to Ansible Fest and welcome to our virtual booth. Over the next several minutes, we're going to talk about enterprise network automation with Ansible. We'll look at who is Network to Code, talk about how and what we deliver to our clients. We'll talk about how these technologies, tools, and processes that we'll be covering can be used to deliver enterprise network automation back to the business. Finally, We'll look at live demos on what can be accomplished leveraging Ansible and Ansible Tower. First up, who is Network to Code? Network to Code is a solution provider that was founded over six years ago. Our sole focus is around driving inefficiencies out of network management and network operations. We bridge that gap between DevOps, software development, and networking. We break down workflows. We look at what network engineers and network operators are doing today manually on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, monthly basis, and whatever reoccurrence that is. And then we make recommendations on strategy and provide professional services and training to really transform the way the overall network is managed and built on a day-to-day -day basis. How do we do that? How do you transform network management with network automation? Our approach is simple. We first engage and understand the current processes that are in place, the current repeatable tasks. From there, we're able to build and recommend a strategy and architecture. That's our initial plan. That plan leads us to building a network automation platform. A platform is comprised of several components, several of which are source of truth, looking at telemetry, getting real-time state of the network, and of course, we have automation and orchestration, just to name a few of the key components. And this platform exists to automate workflows. These workflows are such as bouncing a port, adding a VLAN, removing a VLAN, adding a BGP peer. These are all workflows that would be automated by such a platform. Then there's integrations. There's integrations that are often required on the southbound side, seen to the right, communicating to network devices and infrastructure. If a platform doesn't support yet a operating system or a device platform, then that can be added. There's also integrations on the northbound side shown in the top left. This is the presentation layer. This is how network automation and network resources is presented back to different user bases. You should take into consideration if the user is a network administrator, a network engineer, maybe it's a sysadmin team, a server team, a business user. They should have different ways to consume network automation. There's delivery pipelines. These are more advanced when there's different presentation layers, several components within a platform, and several device types on the network side, different hardware versions and OS versions. How do you certify and test all of that to ensure when you're going to migrate from platform A to platform B or any component in the full solution that the platform is still going to function as expected. This is only made possible by offering enablement and learning. One part of our business is building out curriculums and full-blown learning plans that map back going from ground zero all the way through being able to support and maintain such a network automation platform. If we zoomed into a platform, this is still very high level, we're going to see a few key components. So now we're going to zoom in to Ansible Tower. This implementation of Ansible Tower can be used as a orchestration and execution engine to communicate to network devices. So in this presentation, in our demos, we're going to be highlighting the fact of what Ansible Tower can do as an execution engine in the context of network automation. Enterprise network automation is a great topic. It usually starts with talking about existing tools. Typically, they're spreadsheets for things like IP address management, tracking VLANs, tracking devices. They're Splunk, they're Cisco tools. There's many commercial tools that are always going to be deployed today. There's also enterprise controls. These are always there. It could be ServiceNow, it could be Remedy. So with these controls and these tools, networks are being managed today very often, very manually. If we take the leap to really deploy newer processes along with possible tools, what we end up looking at is combining DevOps with ChatOps along with 
existing tools and infrastructure and enterprise controls to really deliver the full suite of enterprise network automation. Now, this is not a one size fits all. That's where we offer our services and our expertise to really be that glue and help put the pieces together to deliver full solutions for our clients. Now we're going to shift gears a bit and dive into live demos. We're going to walk through two key demos. One of them is all about chat ops. We're going to interactively use Microsoft Teams to communicate to Ansible Tower to get deeper visibility into existing jobs, job history, projects, job templates, but then also trigger a job template or a playbook directly from Microsoft Teams. We're also going to look at using Ansible and Ansible Tower for a full complete solution for network configuration compliance. Let's dive in. And what we're going to do is communicate directly to our chat bot that'll communicate with Tower. We also have Tower fully set up. We have active hosts, we have failed hosts, inventories, and then we also have an active job history. And so we see this history here. A lot of previous playbooks have been ran. We can now access job history directly from chat. What we could do is use the Ansible command and type in Ansible get jobs. The Microsoft chat bot is communicating with Tower. And now what we're getting is all the previous runs, the last 10, which is that's a variable as well. If you wanted to limit the response, that's also possible. What we could also do is get inventory directly from chat. This tower server has multiple inventory set up. We'll select the inventory that we want to communicate with or get access data from. Now what we'll do is pick our NXOS group, click submit. There's not too much in this group, but what we'll see that comes back is our two devices and a variable for each device. Now what we're going to do is take a look at executing a job template or a playbook directly from, from chat. Now we're going to verify that command by typing Ansible. And now what we can see is that's going to be run job template. We're first going to perform a backup directly from chat. We're going to run our playbook config backup, click submit. At this point, we're going to get a response 987. If we wanted to, we could jump back into the job history in tower. And at this point in time, we, we do see job 987 that's actively running. Now the playbook has completed, and this is a good segue to showcasing our second demo that is all about network config compliance. Now, in order to do config compliance, we first do need to look at config backups. A repository, that's configuration backups that we're using for this demo. And if we want to click reports, we're gonna view our last report for today, and then we're actually gonna see that there's some diffs. Okay. And we can view the config if we wanted to here as well. We would click this link, and we'll see the full running configuration. At this point, what we wanna do is execute config compliance. So from chat, what we actually did previously was execute a playbook to do the backup of configuration files. Those files were backed up from the devices, pushed to this repository, and now what we could do is go to our job templates and execute compliance and let that finish. Now we see the playbook completed okay. The config compliance playbook also creates reports directly in GitHub just like the backups job does as well. So if we were to jump into config compliance, what we're able to do now is to navigate into the right directory to view our reports. We click the reports. For now, we'll view based on OS. We'll click on summary. And at this point, we got a summary of all of our devices. And so it looks like all of our devices are okay, except those three that we also saw had diffs in the backups. At this point, we can click one of these to see why this isn't compliant. If we click on SNMP, what we're able to see is our intended configuration, the existing, and extra. So it looks like somebody added a community string for Ansible Fest on all of the Cisco iOS devices. If we wanted to, we can go fix that, rerun this, and it would show as compliance. We're seeing Ansible control communication to the devices, gathering configurations, defining proper intended state, doing those diffs, and auto-generating all these reports that we have based uh, per device. 
and also based on OS. And then our summary that aggregates all these together. And these are all flexible reports to be able to deliver it in the manner that makes the most sense for you. Have questions? Want to hear more? Please come chat with us in our virtual booth. We look forward to hearing from you.